I've got my underwater rig with me here. And I want to try and compare squid, cooked shrimp, and green crabs and see how the tog like it. I know there's tog here because I've been catching them already, but I want to see what they like and dislike. I know they like the crabs, so I'm going to start with the crabs, see how they like that. All right, here we go. Going on our first drop down. This is about 13 feet of water. Yeah, it's just kind of like a mixture of uh, shell beds, small boulders. And here we go. The togger blasting straight over. It's a mixture of porgy, black sea bass, and toe tog. And they are destroying the crabs immediately. I will say, so just to keep this like an equal test, I dropped the shrimp, the squid, and the crabs down as chum just so it was like equal across the three baits just so they weren't honed in on you know just the green crabs but um with the jig wow, they're just destroying it they knocked the camera over um and so i brought it up rebate it i could feel them not tapping it anymore so i dropped down some more green crabs and Water is a little bit dirty, but not too bad. Good enough to film. But yeah, the tog are just so aggressive. Um, and the cool thing about this test is, like, I can usually tell the difference between the tap between a porgy, a tog, and a sea bass. A sea bass usually just, like, run away with it. The tog will have that, like, fat thump to it, and then they'll grab it and move your line away, and that's when you set the hook. But the porgy is more of, like, a tap, 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 tap. And just looking back at this footage, I can like clearly see the difference. So here we go with the squid. The squid is fully thawed out at this point, and you can see the scent coming off of it. And so we're dropping down. This is an incoming tide. And here comes the tog. Here comes the porgy. Porgy have got some interest. That was a big tog that just rolled in on the squid. And I have caught tog on the shrimp, the squid, and the crabs, but so this is fall. So I just kind of want to see, you know, different time of year. I, I know in the summertime the squid works pretty well with the tog, but they are not really showing much interest in it. And they are definitely on the feed. Like I know if I dropped a crab down next to this, they would probably go for it, but. They're just really, really nervous around it for some reason. You can see them kind of coming up, taking a look at it. And they're just like really nervous to touch it. Yeah, see this guy comes up. He can clearly smell it from far away. And just no real interest. Even the Borgie. You see he took a little bite. He's spitting it out. But they are just coming up, taking a peek. And no interest. And I'm curious if they're a little weary of the the rig, too. You'll see I've got another video coming out with the fishing portion of this video where I I did limit out on the tog. So I know there's big ones here. And I did get sea bass on the squid and the shrimp. So, and porgy, too. But the tog seemed to be really be honed in on the on the green crab. I am I am really curious how they how the shore crab and the green crab would pair up like what interest they would have because I know both of those work at this depth usually shallow water I would go with the the shore crab um, but this time of year I think the green crab really just outwins everything I think the green crab just that half of that crab having that open scent into the water moving in the current really draws them in. And once you chum them up, I mean, they're there. They, they love the green crab this time of year for some reason. That that fall fall dropping water temperature, once it gets you know below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, that green crab just out, outperforms whether you're using the rig or the jig. I just think that green crab really outperforms. So, yeah, I, I threw that... Uh, squid rig down a few times and really didn't have much success and so I switched up to the shrimp this is the cooked shrimp here 
going down to the depths. Current's really starting to move here. You can see they're all all coming over to see what's going on with this shrimp. And I have caught tog with shrimp before, so I know it works. And there is a lot of fish here because I've been chumming them up. And I am anchored as well. I think the anchoring for tog fishing is really important. I mean, unless you can't do it safely from a kayak, sometimes you just can't do it. Um, it the current's just too strong. But in this case, I am I am anchored up on my kayak. And that really makes a big difference. Um, I've found with the tog, when you're moving your jig around, they'll still hit it, but it's it's just harder to dial in the bite and really kind of catch them one after the other. But I mean, I will say after looking at this footage that the tog, you know, I, I always think of them as kind of holding in their caves, just sort of like always being in their caves which you'll see in another clip they they do sort of default to that kind of structure of being in the boulders and caves but they do come out and they swim around um and i think that you know that's they do have to get between spot and spot you know they move around quite a bit so you can't catch them in in movement of when they're going to their next spot um and that's when they'll come out of their caves but these guys are cruising around just in flats I mean, this is just like mussel beds and clams and snails and some mixtures of small, small boulders. But yeah, you can see they're really weary of of the shrimp for some reason. And I'm curious if that they they really just started to dial in on those green crabs and they started to fill up. But there's so many fish that not all of them got a taste of those green crabs. So not sure. Yeah, you can see that little sea bass is. Little sea bass found some interest in it, but nothing of size. It seems like, you know, the smarter, the older, the bigger fish, the ones that you want to catch, seem the most weary of the squid and the shrimp. So, I mean, I think if you're trying to dial in some larger fish, that, yeah, so I kind of gave up on that. wasn't getting tapped. So, check this out. I threw the, I had the green crabs already diced up. I threw it on immediately, dropped it right back down, and check this out. So I fell on top of a rock in like a sketchy position, and look at how spooked they got when the whole rig moved. They completely spooked out, and see how fast the tog swim. They bolt, um, which is kind of why they're so much fun to catch, but... Now they're like a little weary, but they're coming back over. They can smell it. They know it's there. And yeah, you can see the tog used to really give that big that thump. That really that really fat thump to your jig or rig. You kinda know when it's a tog. But yeah, here they come. They're so interested in it. And uh I really think that this test just shows how how much the green crab outperforms. There's a couple other baits that I want to try testing against each other, and let me know um, if there's any bait testing you want me to do because I find this to be really fascinating and interesting. So I could feel them tapping it. I could, uh, so I just picked up and moved it from. Them. I wanted to see if, if they would chase it around, and they are on it. They are really on it. Um, so this is really where the, the green crab shines. They're actively chasing it. And the water did get a little bit dirty when, when the tide really started moving. The tide is ripping this day. But I am able to keep the rig on the bottom. And I'm just holding the rod in my hand. I've got a, fish, a heavy fishing rod connected to this rig up in the top so I can feel all the taps. And usually when the, the rig stops tapping for about a minute, I'll, I'll pull it up because I know they've gotten all the all the bait. But yeah. Pulling it up here, I can kind of feel like I'm running out of bait. And so I re-rigged it. Wanted to see wanted to see if they would immediately go for it. And this is one of the boulders that I'm stacked up next to. You can see that boulder. That boulder's about ten feet tall. Um, so I drop right next to the cave on this one. The cave is off to the left. And 
Yeah, green crab, green crab for the win. And once that that crab gets a little uh, broken up, and the the scent goes in the current, they just go psycho. Like you can see, once one of those crabs got broken up, you can see just how how crazy they get. They really get amped up. And I think that 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 maybe that's you know that half of a green crab, you know, with so much scent in the water, that might be have something to do with why that they they really prefer it and uh also you can see there's like little orange bits in the green crab that's why i always default to a, a orange jig when i use the the crabs you know go in one leg sock it out the other um with the jig and i usually you know go for the lightest jig possible that's always my method is the lightest you can get in the current the better just so when they pick it up like and they move it around they don't feel too much resistance but yeah that's the big rock that i'm fishing next to a lot of nice a lot of nice life lives around it um, sometimes it can be kind of small fish but you know this day i got my keepers so yeah i think that i think i did a couple tests with the the squid and the shrimp and i just could not get anything to bite so i just started dropping down green crabs because i wanted to watch the fish move um, and they just go psycho for it. So I think this test kind of shows that the the green crab really is the way to roll in the fall. And the shore crab's good too. And I would say that the the sand flea, you know, mole crab is another good way to go. There's, as far as I know, I I don't think that there is there sand fleas, mole crabs in the Long Island Sound. That's where I'm fishing right now. I'm in the Long Island Sound. Um, I've actually never really dug the beaches, but I don't, I don't know if they're there. They're like they are, you know, on like the South Shore, um, where you have much stronger beach tides. Um, at least I've, I've not seen them in the, the Long Island Sound, but I also haven't actively gone for them. So if anyone wants to answer that question, I would love to know if there are sand fleas in the Long Island Sound. Especially on the Connecticut side, where there's just like very little um, beach wave movement um, with the sets, um, it's just sort of like stacked up current waves in the in the sound, uh, which can get even sketchier than the sets of waves. Honestly, uh, you can see that big, big tog in the back is like really curious. You can smell that, and there he goes again took it he's like kind of from a distance he's he got these little 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 burgal here but this clip is interesting because you can see the you know these are fresh crabs i dropped down it took them a minute to find it so i'm not sure if it's because i dropped down in more of a flat area i wasn't as close to the boulder i noticed once i got closer to the boulder with my drops the fish were on it immediately but yeah, you can see that that tog was willing to rise off off the bottom to go for it. So the crab has definitely got a lot of interest in them. That's a nice tog right there. Um, the one that's eating it right now, that's a female. Uh, I've got the usually got those broken patterns. Oh, here's a porgy coming right up to the camera to say hey. Hey, Mr. Porgy. There were some big, big porgies that day. I was slamming some big ones. I didn't keep any, but... Yeah, there's some real big porgy around if, if that's what you're going for. Once the water temperatures drop below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, I, I find that that's really when the fattest porgies stick around. Those little ones dip. Um, or they eat by striper. But, yeah, a lot of big porgies that day. I could feel that my bait was gone. And I think that, I think this is my last drop that I did here. You can see that boulder. You're gonna. I think this is the clip. You're gonna be able to see the cave, which is pretty cool. Uh, the cave is off to the right, um, and yeah, you can see those those tog. When they get spooked, they dart quick. Um, and yeah, when you set the hook on a big tog, they ha it's they are like a big piece of muscle. If you've ever held a tog before, it's just like a giant piece of muscle, and when you set the hook on them, they're trying to break you off in that cave. That's their first reaction is drop back down in the structure and try and break you off to get free. 
So that's usually what happens once you set the hook on one. They'll dig straight back down, try and get inside that cave. But yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if because I, I dropped down so many times to get these clips that they're sort of done feeding. I'm not sure if, you know, I really found that when the tide started to move initially and was in that fast current speed right when the tide had shifted to incoming from slack that was really when the fish were on the strongest feed and I, they're really not as active anymore so i think that that was um something i noticed for sure there's the cave right there you see the the big ones are hiding inside that little pocket there yeah there's a female right there coming out to say hey 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 what's going on some nice clear footage of them you can see and you can see it went right back into that cave here's a there's a male right there coming out to say what's up and yeah that's what i noticed is the biggest ones were definitely down in the cave and so i picked it up i wasn't getting too many taps so i think i picked it back up and wanted to check if my bait was still there and went back down but you know, during the course of, of filming this, I was putting squid and the shrimp on the jig, and I was slamming sea bass and porgy too. Um, this, this, oh, here they found it. They all found it, so they're going psycho on it. But if you're just trying to go for sea bass, that shrimp I worked really well. I was getting some pretty good sized sea bass too. So if you're just in a pinch and you can't get crabs and you just want to go for sea bass, I mean, put some cooked shrimp on a jig and drop it down for sea bass. It worked really well. Same with the squid. And um, the squid is going to hold on the hook the best out of all these baits. Like you can let a piece of squid rock for a lot more catches than you could a, a green crab. So. You could save some money by doing that. And you can also just refreeze it, too. Um, you could freeze the crabs. They they definitely work if, if, you know, you end up fishing for a shorter session and you've got a bunch of green crabs left over, you can freeze them, and it definitely works. It's kind of like freezing bull crabs. You know, they, they still work. But, yeah, I mean, if you're in a pinch and you just need some bait to go to go catch some bottom fish i think the squid and the the shrimp work pretty well but if you're just trying to target tog i would definitely use crabs i would either use the green crab the the shore crab or the mole crab um i think that the blue crab you know that could work too but it seems like the smaller crab is primarily what they're feeding on so that's a nice female right there coming in to, to chew on that crab and yeah, um, I would say that the the importance of chumming is 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 really clutch when it comes to to togging. Is is really just bringing them into your area so that each time you're dropping down, they're somewhat close to your jig. So I, you know, really just chumming up the area, then dropping down. I mean, you'll be slamming them one after the other and wading through those taps. Um, the, the tog are usually secondary to the, to the bait. I've, I've found by looking at this footage that the porgy will usually roll in first and then the tog will, will come in, push them out of the way and make those big fat thumps. And you're waiting for that, for that jig to move. You want it to kind of start to slide and you just kind of got to pay attention to your line. Oh, that sea bass was, was very curious. But yeah, let me know if you learned anything from this video. I certainly did. I I could look at this type of footage for hours and hours. I find it so fascinating. And I learn a lot just by looking at the underwater footage compared to just fishing. Because you can kind of connect the dots on all those questions that you had from above. You know, I want to know what pocket that cave is extending out of. Just for the, for the future, you know, I can drop down and make sure my jig is... is getting next to those uh cave entrances because that's where the fatties seem to be hanging out it seems like the flats are really when the, where the small fish are so definitely you know constantly learning stuff from the underwater footage and it's so easy to drop a, a gopro down and do this yourself so i definitely suggest um if you've never dropped a gopro down on your own spot definitely do it you can learn a lot about the structure and know where the snags are and 
and just kind of under, trying to understand the behavior of the fish. So I'm definitely going to be doing more of these tests and 